Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, and I have a movie review for you today. <clears throat> now I know you're all probably sitting there asking yourself, uh, hey, Nightwalker, buddy, this movie that you're reviewing today, why the hell are you wearing a Christmas hat? What has this movie got to do anything with Christmas? Uh, you know, what made you pick this? You know, for the week before Christmas, what made you decide you got to review this movie? What does it have to do with Christmas? Not a damn thing. In all honesty, uh, this movie that we're talking about, Island of Death, being that Christmas is a religious holiday, um, if you're the kind of person you hate religion, this movie's probably just going to make you hate it even more, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, yeah, this movie came out, I believe, in 1976, written and directed by Nico Mastarakis. And uh, the movie is... It's disturbing, man. And it's meant to be disturbing. And so it's like, you know... I mean, come on. I could do like every other horror channel. I mean, as I, I could review Black Christmas as much as I would love to review that movie or Krampus or Gremlins or, you know, Rare Imports, you know, or, you know, whatever. It's like everybody's doing that already. So and I know what you little deviants want. I know what you want for Christmas. You want sick, depraved filth. And your buddy, the Nightwalker, he's going to give that to you. So anyway, so this story takes place on uh, the island of Makinos. That's it, right? Makinos? Yeah, Makinos. Makinos. Anyway, our story, can, uh, there's going to be some spoilers, okay? I'm going to go ahead and let you in on that right now. But um, our story is about two, a couple. We have Celia and we have Christopher. And at first they seem like, you know, this, you know, very romantic couple and seem like, you know, they're just normal, enjoying a vacation, going to the island of Makinos, Mykonos. And, you know, they're just going to enjoy themselves and have a good time and um, just, you know, take in the sights and enjoy, the, you know, have a good time. So they get there and, uh, you know, they rent a room and um, it doesn't take long. Okay. Actually, the movie opens with our friend Christopher here lying in a lime pit, and he's pretty bad off. He's pretty worse for wear. And uh, we'll get to that, you know. It's setting everything up. So anyway, so we find out that uh, Christopher and Celia, they're not exactly as, you know, they're not as innocent as you might think that they are. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, they're pretty deviant. And uh, we find out immediately that what ends up happening is that Christopher and Celia... Uh, I'm trying to debate whether I should go ahead and, um, should I go ahead and say this now or should I say it later? I already said this is going to be a spoiler, uh, review, but anyway, so, you know, they're walking along and stuff and, uh, you know, Christopher decides that, you know, well, actually I think it's Celia. She decides she wants to make love and he decides, you know, there's a phone booth right there. Remember back when there used to be phone booths? So he decides he wants to make love to her in the phone booth. And not only that, Christopher decides he wants to take it a little step further. How does he do that? He decides, well, I want to call my mother and I want her to listen to us getting it on. So he does. He calls his mother and he's, you know, telling her, you know, you know, she's like, Christopher, what's that noise? What's going on? And he's all like, you know, I'm. I'm making love to Celia and we're making you listen to it. And so she's like, you know, Oh, Christopher, you depraved nasty boy and all that kind of, you stop that right now and everything else. And, you know, and, uh, so meanwhile, we find out while this is going on, that, uh, the call is actually being listened in on by the police. And we find out that Celia and Christopher are actually fugitives from justice. And they actually have a detective who's after them for all kinds of crimes. So we find out these two are not innocent. So, you know, they get done with their little tryst in the phone booth. And, and Celia is kind of like not exactly the romantic, you know, romantic um, session, I guess you could say, that she hoped for. And, you know, we'll get to that in a little bit. But so anyway, so they're out walking around and they decide to go to this beautiful restaurant for dinner. And while they're sitting there, you know, just. You know, enjoying the atmosphere, having drinks, having dinner. and everything. Christopher notices that there's a man who keeps staring at Celia. And he tells Celia about this. And, uh, you know, he's, you know, she's all like, just, you know, don't worry about it. Just leave it alone and all that kind of stuff. And the guy's like, you know, the guy's a filth. He's a pervert. You know, I know what he's thinking about you and all this kind of stuff. And so Christopher does what any normal person would do. He invites him over and, you know, gives him a drink and all that stuff. 
But the thing is, he doesn't tell this guy that Celia is his woman. He tells her that, uh, or he tells the guy that uh, Celia is actually his cousin and that they're here vacationing and stuff like that. And uh, the man reveals that he's a painter. He's here, you know, helping paint to restore some old historic buildings in the island. And uh, so basically he, this guy and Celia make a date that they can go and, and uh, you know, she'll help him paint these buildings and stuff like that. So, you know, yeah, we kind of get, you know, it's like, okay, Sylvia or Sylvia, uh, Celia and Christopher, they, they kind of got like a kinky thing going on here. So they're on their way back and they notice that the landlady that they rented a room from, uh, even though she admitted she's married, she's having sex with a man who's clearly not her husband. And this upsets Christopher a lot. And he's going on and on about how, you know, the woman's a cheating bitch and she needs to pay for what she's done and everything else. And, you know, Celia's like, Christopher, just let it go, man. Just let it go. And he's like, no, no, she's a lying, cheating bitch and she needs to be dealt with and all this kind of stuff. And then, <clears throat> so the next day, the guy, he's out painting. Celia comes up and, you know, they start kind of painting. They start getting playful. And then they get into full-blown, you know, sex. Uh, it's not hardcore, but you know, you're definitely going to get the idea. So there's plenty of nudity. There's all that kind of stuff in here. So, but the thing is, is while Celia is having sex with this guy, Christopher, meanwhile, is taking pictures of him, taking a picture of the two of them having sex. So when they get done, Christopher goes up and he attacks the guy, starts kicking him, beating on him, everything else. And then, uh, he takes a hammer and, you know, not nails, but kind of like spikes and, uh, basically impales him on the concrete. And so, you know, Celia is like, you know, what are we going to do with this guy? And so, you know, he's all like, he looks thirsty. She says, he looks thirsty. And so he's all like, he looks at the bucket of paint there. He's like, give him a drink. And so they force him to drink paint, which obviously kills him. Meanwhile, the uh, detective who's after uh, Christopher and Celia, you know, he arrives on the island and he's looking for them. And um, so, you know, they, you know, just by lucky chance, they happen to notice that this, you know, I believe the character's name is Foster. They believe that Foster, they notice that Foster is on the island. He's looking for them. And they're like, oh, my God, you know, we got to get out of here and all this. So there, there's kind of this little cat and mouse kind of a chase and things like that. And, uh, you know, so they get to the airport and they, you know, he's all like, yeah, I got to stop at the hardware store. I need to pick up a couple of things. So Foster gets to the airport. He's about ready to get into his plane. And turns out Celia and Christopher, they're already inside the plane and they managed to put a noose around his neck. And so, you know, Christopher starts the plane and everything with Foster hanging outside. So he's hanging on to the, the rails and they're trying to keep from falling. And finally he does. And, you know, he hangs by the neck, snaps his neck. He's dead. So, you know, um, so Christopher gives Celia a knife, tells her, cut him loose. So she saws the rope and everything. He falls into the falls into the water and he's dead. Then, uh, you know, we find out, too, that now there's a gay couple. And then this is what I meant when I say, you know, you're going to hate if you hate religion already, you're going to hate it even more with this movie after watching this movie, because uh, we find out that basically Christopher is extremely religious. He sees himself as extremely religious and he's one of these kind of people, the people that he murders. He honestly thinks he's doing God's work. And so he figures that, you know gay is a sin gay is horrible and everything else um so he decided you know yeah i need to uh i need to go ahead and you know kill these kill these gay people and stuff like that and at one point um of course they're taking pictures before they do anything so uh christopher takes a sword he chases after one of the gay men while celia she takes a pistol and she's, you know, kind of like pointing at the one guy and she makes him like stick in his mouth. And he's basically, you know, like he's giving oral to the gun barrel. The only problem is, though, is with Celia, it ends, yeah, uh, her barrel goes off, if you know what I mean. And, you know, the walls end up being painted with the guy's blood and brains. And um, Christopher, he finally catches up to the other gay man and he, you know, Cuts the guy with the sword and kills him, basically. Now that I think about it, talking about cutting, I forgot to mention, there's a wonderful scene at the beginning of the movie. It's at, it's pretty much after the uh, the scene in the phone booth where Christopher and uh, Celia, you know, after they'd gone back to their room and stuff, the next morning, Christopher wakes up. 
wakes up next to Celia. He wants to, you know, uh, have some fun time with Celia, but she's not into it. She wants to just sleep and rest. And so he's upset because he wants to get his jollies and he can't. So he goes out in the garden and guess what? He sees a goat. You see where I'm going with this? So takes the goat. Um, yes, it's Christopher has sex with the goat. So. So, yeah, so, you know, there's bestiality in this. we got homosexuality, things like that. Oh, isn't this great? <clears throat> so, anyway, so, uh, and Christopher, after he has sex with the goat, he ends up killing it. And basically throwing the goat's body down a well. Anyway, so, going back to it, uh, now that, uh, uh, you know, after the murder of the two, of the gay couple, uh, Christopher and Celia, they, you know, you know, they look at the pictures that they took, they develop them first and then they look at them and stuff like that. So obviously this was a time before cell phones or, you know, digital cameras where you could take a picture you see immediately. So they have to develop their pictures first, but they're both laying in bed and they see the pictures and they both get aroused and decide to engage in some mutual masturbation. See, happy holidays, everybody. But anyway, so they get done with that. And then uh, we find out that uh, there's kind of this cougar woman that, you know, she kind of really would like to get close to Christopher. And Christopher is deciding he would like to, you know, basically make this woman the next victim. But here's the problem. Celia, she's getting tired of it. You know, after Foster came after them, you know, she wants to basically put an end to it. And she just kind of wants to just live out their lives and just you know, stop with the killing. But Christopher, he's, he just kind of keeps telling her just one more, just one more. We get this last one. We'll be done with it. So just one more stick with me one more. We got this. So, uh, so he decides he's, but he's like, also too, he's all like, you know, I made you go do that humiliating stuff with like the painter. Wouldn't you like to see me do something, you know, silly with this woman? And, you know, he's able to ultimately, he's able to convince Celia to go for this. So he goes and he sees this woman and, um, you know, so she's getting real kinky and everything else. And, you know, obviously she's older woman, he's younger man. So they're in bed and all this kind of stuff. And eventually Christopher decides, you know, he's going to take a whiz on her, which he does. And so he, you know, basically pees on her. And at first you think she's going to be like freaked out by the whole thing, but turns out, no, actually she's kind of into it. She doesn't mind a golden shower once in a while. And, uh, so, <laughs> So, uh, she ends up getting a little too rough with Christopher and he doesn't like that. So he ends up beating her up and knocking her unconscious. And so he wraps her up, you know, uh, was it, I think it was like in a rug or a sheet or something. I don't remember that part exactly, but, but anyway, he and Celia, they, you know, they take her out and they find this basically kind of like a front loader, you know, where the, the blade, you know, kind of, got, you know, where, where it's, you know what I mean? You know, where it moves dirt and stuff like that. So they lay her, push, position her just right under the, the blade. And he gets up, he turns on, brings it down where it cuts her head off. So there's some good beheading in this movie. And then, uh, so, yeah, then we find out that um, the next day, uh, you know, they're, you know, Celia and Christopher, they're trying to, he's trying to enjoy his vacation. And, you know, he's asking Celia, hey, do you want to go fishing, you know, and stuff like that. And she's like, no, I'm not feeling too good. I just want to go to my room and lay down and stuff. Christopher's like, okay, that's fine, you know, so he's like, you know, I'll catch you some fish and we can have a nice dinner and stuff, so, and she's like, okay, great, you know, so she's going back to relax and take a bath, and, but, you know, as she's going back to take a bath, and uh, Christopher's going off to go fishing, apparently these two hippie guys, they get a look at Celia, and they decide they need to have some of that, and they don't care. So Celia, she goes back to the room. She takes her clothes off. She gets into the tub. Well, these two guys come in and they decide they're going to gang rape her. And she's, you know, screaming for help. She's pleading for them to get out, to leave her alone and stuff like that. And um, <clears throat> you got you got uh, Christopher, who's got kind of like a harpoon gun. So he comes back and he hears the scuffle going on in the bathroom. So he goes in and he fights the two guys and he ends up killing both of them, saving Celia. And uh, so... You know, now we got a writer, kind of like an investigator slash writer come in, who is actually played by the writer director of the movie, Nico Mastarakis. So he comes in and he's, you know, talking to him and stuff. And, and uh, he wants to find out some information about them, like what had happened, what was the whole situation, everything else. So 
anyway, so, you know, he tells him all that. And he seems like he's satisfied. But he's going around. And kind of little bit by little bit, he, the, you know, the writer investigator, he starts kind of picking up some things. He knows thing that, I don't know, something about Celia and Christopher doesn't seem quite on the level here. So, but he starts to dig further. Now, that by this point, Celia, she's completely upset. She wants to leave. She wants to get the hell out. You know, Mechanos is not what she wants it to be. And, uh, but we find out there's actually a lesbian bartender. At one point, Christopher and Celia go to a bar where, you know, they just have a drink and stuff like that. It turns out that the bartender, she's a lesbian. And she's definitely got an eye for Celia. And uh, also, too, and on top of that, she's a heroin addict. So, you know, so... Christopher decides, you know, one more. Let's just get that one more. And Celia's like, no, can't we please just go already? No more killing. I don't want to do this anymore and all this. And he's all like, you know, he's like, Celia, don't worry about it. I'm older and wiser and things like that. You know, I promise, you know, this will be fine. We'll be okay and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, again, he's able to, you know, coax Celia into going in with this, you know, with this barmaid. And so they go back to her place and, you know, she ends up having lesbian sex with Celia. And uh, meanwhile, Christopher, he's out, you know, doing his thing, taking his pictures, all this other kind of stuff. And so they get done. Uh, so, uh, you know, the girl, the barmaid, she's getting ready to shoot herself up. And Celia is, you know, you want me to try some of that or can I try some of that? And she's all like, no, this isn't for you and stuff. And so she shoots herself up. And so she's, you know, good and high and all this. So um, Christopher, he comes in and basically takes, you know, a lighter and a blow a lighter and a can of like hairspray or something or spray paint or whatever it was. And, you know, basically makes a, a little flamethrower out of it just shh, like that burns her up. And uh, so she's dead. So so it's the very next morning and a couple of things are happening simultaneously. On the one hand, we have the investigator reporter, you know. He's looking around and he's happening to come up to the apartment of the barmaid and he notices looking through the window, he sees her dead body. So he's going to raise the alarm that, you know, yeah, you know, this woman's been murdered and, you know, maybe uh, Celia and Christopher are not what they appear to be and things like that. But at the same time, <clears throat> Christopher, he's getting a little tired of Celia kind of rejecting his advances. And so he figures, well, you know what? The landlady, she's a skank. So I'll just go, you know, get a little loving off of her and everything. It'd be good. So she's, you know, taking a shower. So he goes in and tries to get with her in the shower. She's not having it, though. She doesn't like it. So he's chasing her around. He grabs kind of like a, like a hay hook. And uh, so he's getting furious that she won't just give in and let him get his rocks off. And at one point, she, she runs from him. She goes into a room. She closes the door. She's like, backed up against the door you know try to put weight on it and he gets so mad that he takes the hook and he hits it through the door and, the, and it manages to come right out through her chest and basically that kills her so unintentionally he ended up killing the landlady and then of course now they see you know the cops are looking for him you know everything yeah they're pretty much they're pretty much screwed so he goes he grabs celia and they run they try to get away they're you know running through the countryside they're freezing so on and so forth and, um, you know, although I forgot to mention that during the course of the movie that, uh, uh, Celia keeps having this bad dream. She keeps having this bad dream about this weird guy and he keeps like laughing maniacally and stuff like that. And she doesn't know what it means. She doesn't understand what's going on. So, um, eventually they find this, basically he's kind of like a sheep farmer. You know, he's got, you know, got the farm and everything else. And so they're kind of trying to explain to him that, you know, they need a place to sleep and everything else. So the guy's like, okay, you know, basically, yeah. So he lets him stay, gives him some food, and they fall asleep. Well, Celia's asleep and everything else. So this guy, he comes in and, you know, it's like he sees Celia and she's, she's just too good to resist. So he starts basically having sex with Celia and she's trying to, you know, she's trying to, um, get him off of her and stuff like that. And she's like, you know, she's yelling to Christopher, you know, Christopher, help me. Come on, get this guy off of me. Help me. So what does Christopher do? He pulls out his camera and he starts taking pictures, you know, and the guy seeing that, you know, rather than helping Celia, he rather take pictures and be a, you know, a dirty perv. He goes and just starts, you know, beating the crap out of Christopher 
And once Christopher is pretty much knocked unconscious, he basically sodomizes Christopher. Pulls down Christopher's pants and gives him some, you know what I mean. And Celia is actually happy about this because she's, you know, because of the fact that, you know, Christopher just keeps letting her be abused and everything. And she kind of takes it almost as a sign of affection that this guy, you know, rather than helping her, you know, that, that this guy seeing that Christopher rather than helping her would rather just enjoy watching her be degraded decides he's going to degrade Christopher. So basically this, this farmer, he, uh, he takes Christopher and basically throws him oh, kind of like off of a little cliff into a lime pit. And, uh, so, you know, he goes and Celia comes up, you know, and she's sitting there and he gives, you know, and the farmer, he gives Celia food to eat. She's eating bread and stuff. And so Christopher keeps, he's like, Celia, help me, help me and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, and she's all like, I don't think the farmer would like that, you know, and stuff, you know, uh, basically kind of Celia has kind of resigned herself to become the farmer, to become his woman. And so, you know, and at one point we get the real the real kicker of the movie that uh, Christopher says, you know, Celia, I need you to help me. I'm your brother. So we find out this whole movie, you're going along here and you think that uh, Christopher and Celia are actually like a married couple or like a boyfriend, girlfriend thing. No, they're a brother, sister incest relationship. So, you know, we got all the good stuff here. We got, oh yeah, we got uh, homosexuality. We got lesbianism. We got, you know, incest. We got bestiality. You got it all in here. So, Merry Christmas. <laughs> anyway, so the, uh, yeah, so pretty much the farmer decides, you know, it's like he's pretty much going to turn uh, Celia into his love goddess. And I don't know if you see, that's her right there. That's Christopher right there. But he decides he's going to turn Celia into his love goddess. And so they're in there having this really wild, passionate sex and everything else. And it's, you know, getting hot and heavy. Meanwhile, you got Christopher, he's out, you know, laying in the lime pit. And of course, the one thing that really, he really did not want to happen happens. It starts raining. And so he starts, you know, it hits the lime. And so it starts burning him up. And so Christopher dies a very bad, violent death. And um, Celia, she doesn't die, but uh, you could kind of, you could kind of debate on that. You know, was her fate worse than death? You know, that she becomes basically the, the sex object for this, you know, sheep farmer that she can never get away from and all this kind of stuff. So you kind of wonder about that. Like, who got the worst of the deal? But anyway, that's uh, pretty much going to do it. So, uh, yeah, like I said, you know, for a Christmas episode, I wanted to do something that was pretty out of the box. You know, like I said, I could have reviewed one of the Christmas horror movies and stuff, but just, I don't know, it just felt like everybody does that. So I wanted to do something a little bit different with this. So I decided to go ahead and go for something, you know, real depravity, you know, give you guys a little something extra for Christmas this year. But um, yeah, the movie all came as a result, believe it or not, of Nico Mastarakis going to see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And in his mind, he felt that Toby Hooper really wanted to try to make the most vile, dis disturbing movie he could possibly ever make. And he felt like, you know, while Hooper made a very effective, disturbing film, he felt like, you know, I could try to do that, too. And so he decided, I'm going to make a movie that just throws all kinds of taboo in there, you know. And um, for the most part, this movie is an entertaining watch, um, but you got to be in a morally bankrupt kind of mood to watch this sort of thing. Um, you know, if you got if you're very, very. You know, if you're into the PG-13 stuff, yeah, you're going to really have to stay away from this because this is hardcore stuff. This is not for the kids. It's not for the faint, the faint of heart or squeamish. So, yeah, you got to be made of some tough stuff to take this one. But um, overall, it's an interesting movie. It's entertaining. Um, you know, it's got some surprises to it. It goes in directions you don't think a movie would normally go in. But, um, yeah, just know what you're getting into with this movie because, you know, you go in and watch this Whoo, you know, so anyway, that's, uh, yeah, but the movie is pretty disturbing in its own way. So maybe, you know, it's, it's different, you know, it's different from Texas Chainsaw. Texas Chainsaw was very disturbing and shocking in its own way. This is disturbing in its own way, but still, you know, um, you know, beautifully shot movie. I will say that, you know, it's beautifully photographed. Um, some of the acting is definitely wonky. Um, the acting by Sylvia sometimes, or Sylvia, Celia. Uh, the actress, you get the feeling like sometimes she's just really just phoning it in. She's not really emoting. She's just delivering her lines, but not really like 
delivering with conviction. The actor who played Christopher actually does a pretty good job, and he does play the part of a, reni- or a religious uh, fanatic pretty well, you know. And uh, it's definitely a tried and true horror story, you know, the religious fanatics that go around murdering people because they feel they have to cleanse the world and that kind of thing. So it's it's definitely, you know, tried and true horror film. But um, if you come across it, like I said, you know, if you're offended by nudity and sex and taboo in a horror film, you better stay away from this. But uh, anyway, I thought I'd just give you guys a little something different for Halloween or for Halloween, God, for Christmas. Because like I said, I could have done, you know, I could have done Silent Night, Deadly Night. And, you know, as much fun as it'd be to review those movies, like, come on, man. Every horror channel reviews that stuff. So I admit it. I wanted to try a little something different. So anyway, so that's going to do it. So, uh, yeah, if anybody took the time to watch this video, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, please like and subscribe. I try to get more videos out more often. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, um, you come here to the Nightwalker's lair, you're going to see some of the more depraved stuff. So, just so you know, you're aware of that. But anyway, uh, take care and, uh, you know, maybe take a vacation. Maybe to Mykonos. Hopefully, I might see you there.